So I am spending a lot of time with my parents because I'm trying to stay in the will. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know what, let's, let's see what we might have in common here. Um, my round of applause, round of applause. Uh, how many parents are in the audience this evening? Round of applause. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. That's great, that's great, because uh, I'm a new mom. I, I have a 77 and an 84 year old. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> like one day I had parents, the next day I'm like, what are Ruby D and Ossie Davis doing in my house? <laughs> now, if you're looking at me and you're thinking that I look too young to have parents that old, you are absolutely right and thank you. <laughs> But my parents had me late in life, so apparently I'm their retirement plan. <laughs> yes, I am the cutest IRA you'll ever see. <laughs> so I am spending a lot of time with my parents because I'm trying to stay in the will. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm not their only child, but I am the only one they like. <laughs> So, hashtag winning. <laughs> Actually, I, I like my parents, too. I think they're adorable. Like, 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 not only are they still married, you know, to each other, um, they were married to each other before I was born. <laughs> Who does that? <laughs> and they've been married. They've been married, you guys, for over 50 years. Yes. But I... I I, I have no idea how. <laughs> no, because my dad is a horrible gift giver, right? When I was a kid, my dad gave my mom a set of steak knives for her birthday. Yeah, I knew that was wrong and I was only four. I was like, daddy about to get stabbed. <laughs> You know, spending a lot of time with my parents when they're older means I'm, I'm learning a lot. I'm learning a lot that I didn't know. Like, I had no idea how expensive prescription medication is. Yeah, oh, listen, my mom dropped a pill. I was like, look at here, lady. We gonna find this pill. We gonna dust it off. And you're gonna take it. And if you don't, I will. Because we don't waste Xanax in this house. There's a term for this, by the way. Uh, there's a term for this. It's called role reversal, right? Yeah, if you're from my generation, it's called Freaky Friday. And it is indeed quite weird. Okay, like, like, like you know what? I, I, I didn't see it coming. There, it, there were signs and I should have known. Like I, I took my mom to the dentist. She hates the dentist. She's complaining. She's dragging her feet. She doesn't want to get in the chair. And I heard myself say, if you behave yourself. <laughs> I'll take you to the liquor store. Now, here's the thing, I was already going for me, but she didn't need to know that. <laughs> but this is so weird for me, right? Because when I, when I was growing up, my mom was the disciplinarian in the house, okay? My mom's Jamaican, they, they beat children professionally. <laughs> <laughs> but what was cool about my mom is that she would never spank me at the moment I did something wrong. She would wait. <laughs> She called it waiting until she had calmed down. <laughs> Which sounds really good, in theory. In practice, it meant I never knew when it was coming. <laughs> when I would least suspect it, my mother would swoop down out of nowhere and be like, so, you want to put crayons in the washing machine? <laughs> I'm like, Ma, that was 30 years ago. <laughs> I, I think there's 
there's a statute of limitations. <laughs> but you know, you do know that as you, as you get older, that mother-daughter relationship gets complicated, right? <laughs> Yeah, and I, I say that, I say that um, because whenever I go to book club, me and my girlfriends always end up talking about our moms. Yeah, that, that's how book club turned into wine club. <laughs> now we just read the labels on wine bottles. <laughs> Alcohol content, 12%. Ladies, I think we have a bestseller. <laughs> Now, I, I, I will tell you guys, I'll tell you guys, I, I love my mom, but I'm a daddy's girl. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's why my favorite movie is Taken. Look, every girl wants to believe that if she gets kidnapped, her dad is gonna come for her, right? And I believe that, I believe if I got kidnapped, my dad would come for me but my dad is 84. <laughs> it, it's gonna take a while. <laughs> He's gonna have to look for his glasses, find his car keys. He's gonna be clipping coupons, trying to get a deal for me. <laughs> Cause my dad's a funny dude, man. I, uh, I took him to the doctor and uh, we walk in and I'm like, daddy, we, we have been in every department here except OBGYN. And he goes, I know, take me there. Maybe I'll get lucky. <laughs> we, um, I took him to Burger King, you know, cause he had coupons. Um, <laughs> he got his food, but his change was short by a penny. Yeah, yeah, you, uh, you can't shortchange old people. Because my dad is from that generation that can do math. <laughs> In his head. <laughs> That's magic to me. Because <laughs> I'll be honest, I'm, I'm not good at math, right? But a lot of people aren't, right? I, I, was, uh, I was shopping the other day, and um, I got to the register, and my bill came to $8.00. 50 cents. I gave the cashier $10. She rang it in. I then found and gave her 50 cents and she froze. <laughs> she stood so still for so long. I thought we were playing freeze tag and nobody told me. <laughs> Finally, she said, I don't know how much to give you back. I said, ten dollars. <laughs> Cause I'm not good at math. <laughs> but I know, I know at, uh, at this stage in our lives together, I just gotta, I gotta buckle up and ride it out, right? Cause longevity runs in my family. Right? My grandma, my nana, she lived to be 99. Yeah, but 99 doesn't seem like a real age, does it? That's more like how many bottles of beer on the wall you start out with. <laughs> I mean, you know you're old when your age is a really good test score. <laughs> If you're over 100, that's extra credit. <laughs> now my family, my family, we, uh, we age really well physically. Uh, unfortunately, the mind goes. Yeah, sexy and senile is not a good combination. <laughs> I asked my grandfather one time, I was like, Grandpa, you still think about women? And he was like, oh yeah. <laughs> but I forget why. <laughs> you know, 
I've also, uh, I've also learned that when you are taking care of people, it's very important that you take care of yourself too, right? So I, uh, I joined a gym. Thank you, I'm ready to quit. Uh, but you know what, I'ma hold out till Martin Luther King Day, cause I have a dream. <laughs> my, trainer, uh, my trainer told me that walking is good exercise because you can do it anywhere. No, you can't. In my neighborhood, you start at walk and end up running. <laughs> but listen, life is short. You should do what you love. And I love dancing. That's what I love doing. That's, so that's why I go to Zumba. Oh, thank you. I love Zumba. Zumba is like going clubbing in comfortable shoes. <laughs> but here's the thing, here's the thing. Have you ever seen that woman in Zumba class who takes it way too seriously? <laughs> You know, she knows every move. She's just waiting for the instructor to drop dead because that's gonna be her moment. <laughs> that's me. <laughs> but here, you know, what I really love about Zumba class is that anybody can come, anybody can do it. Well, Almost anybody, almost anybody. We had a woman show up to Zumba class and she was seven months pregnant. And I was like, mm, she better not have that baby on a good song. <laughs> My favorite person in Zumba class is that woman who is always off beat. <sighs> it's fascinating, right? It, it's like the signals from her brain to her feet are using an outdated version of Google Maps. <laughs> you know, we go left, she goes right. She goes right, we go left. Is she ahead, is she behind? I don't know now, it's a time travel question. <laughs> But she really is my favorite person in class, okay? Cause come on, she knows she's off beat, but she shows up anyway. Showing up is half the battle in life, okay? So I love this woman, I support this woman, I just can't look at this woman. <laughs> because she is the Medusa of dancing. <laughs> I mean, one look and I am, I'm done to the next song. Like, huh? Oh. <laughs> is that a baby? <laughs> <laughs> now, now, when you are working out, you have to be very careful, everybody, because apparently working out is the slippery slope to eating right. Oh. <laughs> and it's hard to do now, right? Because everything's got to be organic, gluten-free, registered to vote. Mm. <laughs> my doctor, my doctor said no alcohol, no caffeine, no fatty foods. I said, no copay. <laughs> I'm not paying to hear heresy. <laughs> but now you know it's not just your physical health. You also have to take care of your mental health, right? Last year, last year, uh, I invited my therapist over for Thanksgiving dinner, you know, so she could see what I'm working with. And, um... <laughs> She's in therapy now. Um... <laughs> I'm looking for a new person, but it's hard, because therapy is expensive, isn't it? <laughs> I went to one guy, he wanted to charge me $150 an hour to talk. I said, sir, I can talk to the voices in my head for free. <laughs> but I do think that we all could benefit from a little bit of therapy, 
right? Because it seems especially now, everybody is angry all the time, right? Which is really disheartening because black women, we were angry first. <laughs> On, you guys. <laughs> my grandmother, my grandmother got into an argument with her cousin and they didn't speak for 50 years. And I'm like, you know what, Nana? Whatever happened on the Amistad really should have. <laughs> Thank you for reading the syllabus before the show. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> But see, that's why, that's why I'm trying to do better. I want to be a better person. I'm always working on it. Like, I, uh, I read uh, that when you're having an argument with someone, you're supposed to stop and ask yourself, would you rather be right or would you rather be happy? <sighs> what if being right makes you happy? <laughs> That's why love is hard, man. Love is very hard. You know, I, I will tell you, I was, uh, I was in a long-term relationship, uh, but he didn't, um, he didn't pop the question. Yeah, instead he asked me how I felt about having an open marriage. And I was like, well, that depends on how you feel about having an open casket. <laughs> how difficult dating was until I saw this documentary about women who are dating men in prison. Yeah, look, I, I don't know what these ladies are thinking. Like, well, he may not be coming home to me, but at least I know where he is. <laughs> they had, they had one woman on there who married a serial killer. Now, maybe my standards are a little too high. <laughs> but murder's a deal breaker for me. Because <laughs> here's the thing, at some point during our relationship, you're gonna feel like killing me. <laughs> to know that you can resist that urge. <laughs> now, when you're, when you're dating, when you're dating, I think it's very important to be careful of your language. Like, I, I hear women say all the time, oh, there are no good men out there. That's not true. I was walking across the street one time, I didn't see this car speeding towards me. This man, he reached out and he pulled me back. And he was like, I can't let somebody pretty as you get hurt. <laughs> I was like, oh man, if I was ugly, I'd be dead. <laughs> you know, a bad hair day and no makeup, he'd have shoved me in front of the car. I mean, that's why I try to dress nice, you guys. This isn't vanity, this is safety. <laughs> but this is, uh, this is just so wonderful. You know, I, there's just so much, so much stress in the world. I don't know if you saw um, or heard the statistic, uh, the number one killer in the United States right now is stress. The number two killer is a dude on my block named Quan. <laughs> Actually, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's killer Quan. <laughs> Cause you know, Instagram. <laughs> Follow him before he follows you. <laughs> I think, I think the most important thing I've learned, at least about 
romantic relationships is that they all need the three C's. They need three things, chemistry, compatibility, and commitment, right? And you need all three, because if you just have chemistry, you just have attraction. If you just have compatibility, you just have a friend. If you have commitment, you got a stalker. <laughs> I mean, if that's what you're into. <laughs> but none of that matters if you don't have communication, right? You have to talk to your partner. They did a study and they found that married women who force themselves to stay quiet during arguments are four times more likely to die early. That's how I know I'm gonna live forever. <laughs> I even argue in my sleep and another thing. <laughs> why it's just it's so it's so important we really need a good sense of humor to get through life right as a matter of fact and I think it's a theme you heard it earlier if you really want to live a stress-free happy life you have to do three things you have to work like you don't need the money love like you've never been hurt and dance like nobody's watching right That's, that's easier said than done, isn't it? Because I think most of us work like we're deep in debt, love like we're lonely and desperate, and dance like we're having a seizure. <laughs> <laughs> but I really do, I really do believe that humor makes people happy, and happiness gives us hope. And my hope is that if we can laugh together, we can live together, right? Now, Maybe, maybe not in, in this neighborhood specifically. <laughs> don't tighten up on me now, don't tighten up on me now. Because <laughs> I've actually been treated very well here. I've had a really, really good time. And if you guys have enjoyed me, my name is Leanne, Leanne Lord. If you have not enjoyed me tonight, uh, my name is Jada Pinkett Smith. <laughs> Local man robs Wendy's with alligator. We're the alligator boys now. And the lady be sitting in the bank, she be going, Mom, Mom. <laughs>